Today I would like to talk about the graph functionality, which is one of the most exciting things to work on uh, in, in the context of managing source target mapping metadata. Just for as a bit of an introduction, I'm using team version 161 for this demo, but this functionality has existed pretty much from the start of working with team and has been improved over time. But basically what the idea is, is that in the source of target mappings, you've got all these uh, relationships between data objects and attributes and all kinds of different conventions that are applied to it that in a table setting it may not always be as as clear what um, the overall relationship between all the objects are so for that purpose for a long time there has been a function that said save as directional graph markup language what this function does is it takes this data grid with all these source target mappings, this table, and renders it in a directed graph tool or file. So if I save it, and I will save this file to my uh, to my desktop or demo dgml dot dgml, then I can open up Visual Studio and go to the desktop and look at the information in a more visual way. This is the exact same information that is available in the data grid that you would see in the team application, but it's much easier to understand how these relationship between these source and target data objects are defined. For example, if I want to have a look what kind of information is available in a customer subject area, then I can see, okay, there is a, a customer hub, like a, a key table, and some context tables such as uh, set customer, set customer additional details in this data vault example. All these contextual uh, additions such as creating these subject areas or putting source of target relationships and objects in, in layers, that's all derived based on the configuration in team. So by using the prefix and suffixes and, and validating that this development approach is followed, there's a lot you can derive from the metadata in a very basic setup. And this is indeed the whole purpose of the team application. It's really all about making it as simple as possible to add the minimum required source to target mapping metadata to build the whole solution. And as we will see a bit later, we can take that to much more abstract levels. So less is more in, in the very real term. What we can see in these uh, examples is that oh, the, the subject area's customer is loaded from the staging layer, which, which makes sense in our case. But I can also see that the relationships between the, the business concept entity of customer here also extends to other areas. So depending on where I'm clicking at which level, I can see the relationships to other sources. And I can even zoom further and, and look into what are the relationships at, at attribute level? All that information is already available in the underlying metadata, but we don't really need to model it because, as I said earlier, this can be derived by using the conventions. But I can see in this example here that the state attributes are mapped together, and also that customer essentially is an integration point between multiple source and target mappings. So every edge or line here between two nodes in a graph model is a source of target mapping and you can also see the definition of this which says okay i've got a source node which is this per, uh, persistent staging area table and a target node which is the business concept table hub customer the business key definition of this source of target mapping is member so member from the source maps to the customer ID, the business key, in this key table. And for this particular one, there is a customer ID attribute mapped as the business key. So again, this is a very visual way of explaining the relationships between all the sources and targets and how they come together as part of what is basically a data model at a, at a higher level. This makes it really interesting to, to look at from a data model refactoring point of view, it's not really visible in the 
data table in the team application as much. But if you render this same metadata in a graph like we're doing now, it becomes much more easy to understand how easy it is to refactor the physical model based on these conventions. For example, if I take these two context tables, set customer and set customer additional details, we can look at the attributes that are part of that. But if for some reason we want to change the way we store this information at a physical uh, level, then it is as easy as dragging some of these attributes to other tables, right? So the refactoring, for example, by you know the, the rate of change of attributes or things you can measure from your day-to-day -day operation, that is at a, at a, at a subject matter, subject uh, level, it doesn't matter because they're still the same customer entity with you know its keys and its context, but the physical storage of this information is different. So now there is a mapping between an attribute in this uh, persistent staging area table, which maps to a different table in the data warehouse or in the data vault model. And that can be done pretty much dynamically because all that matters, all that changes here is this source target mapping relationship. And this is an, a starter to, to take a step back from the physical model and look at the information flows in a more abstract term. However, DGML itself is not really that useful for modeling as an input tool. DGML is much more geared towards visualizing structures in a graph interface, and it's a really nice way to explain what it is we're trying to do. However, DGML doesn't really offer things like event handling. So what we really want is that if we have this source target mapping changed, we want to reflect it back into the metadata that we have in the grid and the, the JSON files and all the other processing. So what I'm looking for is to have access to a way we can program, we can code this graph behavior into the application and then we can start designing at this level and still have the, the downstream processing in place. This is where I've been looking around for quite a, quite a while and ended up uh, working with Yworks and the, the Yfiles library, which is a, an awesome library, comes in all kinds of different technologies and um, applications and use cases and, and everything. And it offers this full range of interactivity that we can then use to develop this, this what is basically a front end for modeling at this more abstract level. And that's what I'm going to show next.